If you're modeling in Blender and texturing in Substance Painter and you're doing something mechanical or electrical, at some point you're going to need screws or bolts. And so where are you going to get them? You could model them, but then that's, pol that's polys or vertices. Um, you could uh, try to create them yourselves um, and you could also purchase them. And chances are if you do that, you'll get something that was made in Substance Designer. Now I haven't done any Substance Designer tutorials on my channel before uh, but I'm going to start doing that and here's an image of just a number of bolts that I made I'm going to show you how to make this one here which is kind of like a Phillips but there's all kinds of them there's stars and there's hex ones uh, in internal hexes and there's Robertson's and there's um, uh, all those ones I forget I forget the names of some of these things all right they're all easy to make and at some point maybe I'll I'll make them all for you. I'll also provide a link where you can download the alpha for this and use it in Substance Substance Painter. All right, so over here in Substance Designer, I'm gonna open it up, click New Substance. I'm just gonna leave all this and click Open. And this is what we're gonna get. All right, so uh, this is a pretty much a beginner's Substance Designer thing because I haven't done that much with it either. But uh, we're gonna start doing that. All right, so to create that screw head, we are going to press the space bar and type in shape and we'll find a shape like that and it'll come down and you can see it in the 2D view right there. All right, I'm gonna scale this down just a little bit and then I'm gonna come down to the size here. X, I'm gonna pull that down so I get something sort of narrow. And here, I want it just a little bit narrower in the X like that. All right, so this is what I have. And what I'm going to do is in the angle here, instead of zero, I'm going to put 45. Now I'm going to duplicate that node, put that down there, and just change that to minus 45. All right, so if I put those together, I'll get that X or cross, depending on how you want to look at it. I'm going to grab this output, pull out, press the space bar. I know you don't have to press the space bar, it just comes up automatically. And I'm just going to choose this blend node here. That puts it in the background, and I'm going to take this one and put it in the foreground. And now to see them both, I'm going to put on add. So I've got my, I've got my X. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur this. So I'm going to pull out here, and I'm going to choose blur. And I'm going to use, change the intensity to somewhere around 3.3, something like that. That'll round off the ends a little bit. All right, I'm going to pull out again, and I'm going to search this time for histogram scan. This one here, I'm going to put that one down. And I'm going to use a value of about, for the position, 0.5 or so. And the contrast is going to bring all the way up. So now it's more chunky and it's somewhat rounded off. All right. Next, I'm going to pull out and I'm going to search for non-uniform blur grayscale. And I'm going to connect both to there. And that's going to give me the 3D sort of... Uh, shape to it that I want. Uh, I'll change the values a little bit. I'll try something like three. You can play around with this. Maybe I'll leave it at about five. I'm going to bring the samples all the way up. I'm going to bring the plates all the way up. Actually, I can take the intensity down just a little bit. And you can experiment. I'm going to grab all of this stuff. And that's the first part. The next part's even easier than that. Press the space bar go for shape again and this time I'm going to choose a paraboloid I'm going to scale that down to about 0 0.5 I'm going to pull out of this and I'm going to choose the first one here gradient map I'm going to go to the gradient editor and click to add a black I'll put that about there click to add a white or another one and I'm going to pull that up to about there so I do want it a little bit blurred so you could experiment in GIMP with circles and blurring them Gaussian blur and see uh, you know if you can get something uh, decent I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit switch that to grayscale I'm gonna grab these and pull them over it's time to put these together so I'm gonna pull out of this one grab a blend puts it in the background grab that one put it in here and I'm going to change the blend mode to subtract and now we have that hole all right it's not quite big enough maybe so why don't we take all of this 
pull it down. This is where we got our X. Let's put another node in here to increase the scale of this. It's a transform 2D. So type transform 2D and drop that right in there. And then I think I'll just come to the width and let's try 130% and 130% here. Let's see if that gives us roughly what we need. Let's double click there. All right, we could go with that. We're just doing this relatively quick. Okay, so that is actually the graph. This is called a graph that we need to create this bolt. So I'm going to connect this to our outputs. This is just the default setup. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that into the normal. We'll look over here in the 3D view in a second. I'm going to scroll down here to ambient occlusion. Get rid of this uniform color. Pull out and search for ambient and ambient occlusion HBAO. That's the one that we need for this to work. So we're going to drag this and connect it there. So it's very much like Blender. Now you can start seeing it. And we're also going to get rid of this uniform color down here on the height channel. I'm going to drag this into the height. Okay, now it's a little bit flat. So we'll come over here to materials default, physically based or physically metallic roughness and click on tessellation. Let the properties uh, load and then drag the scale up to about halfway. All right, and now it's sticking out. So we can maximize that and look around. So that's what we have. So of course, any of these parameters can be tweaked, but uh, we could start with that and let's just see how that works. Cause I mean, that took us all of five seconds to do. So to export this now and use it in Substance Painter, you click on this wrench here and choose export outputs find a place to save it. I'm going to save it on the desktop. I'm going to save it as a PNG and come here and just deselect all of these except for height. Just keep, we're going to do it as an alpha. Okay, so keep the height, export outputs, done. Let's go over here and let's check. There it is. All right, so we'll come to Substance Painter. I've got just a plane, I baked the mesh maps that I've thrown on a little metal texture and we're going to use this. So I'm gonna create just a paint layer here and in the properties uh, of that, I'm gonna come down and choose, I don't want normal. Uh, I'll keep all these other ones. For color, I'm gonna just drag it down to about there. Uh, for height, all the way up. Roughness, drag it down a little bit. Metallic all the way up. So we have that. Okay, now I'm gonna import that. So I'm gonna click here on this arrow with the box, add resources come to my desktop, find that, there it is, it's called new graph height right now, you can rename that. All right, I'm gonna define it as an alpha, and I'll just save it to the current session. And there it is, pops up there. Double click on that, and control, and right mouse button, and there it is. Okay. Now let's add just a little bit of dirt on here. I'll make this color and roughness. Color will make it a darkish brown. Roughness will bring all the way up. And let's see if we just use a generator on this plane, we'll end up with that. So let's use, uh, let's increase the grunge scale let's see we'll decrease the grunge scale and just do it something like that okay and um i guess i want that dirt to affect my screws as well so i'm going to add an anchor point i'll just leave it called that i'll come up to the dirt and in the micro details i'll turn, turn that to true and micro height down here we'll choose that anchor point and that that looks better doesn't it all right, now a couple of things I wanted to show you about putting down your screws. Come back to this layer. This is one we're, we're um, putting stuff on. Um, I'm going to click on angle jitter and just bring that up. So each time I stamp, I get a different angle. So there's that. Uh, and another thing is uh, we could do spacing. We can increase the spacing. And so let's say you were doing bolts, I'll make it a bit smaller, along like a panel or something like that. If you do the spacing and the angle jitter, you could then click, hold down shift and control and click and you get a bunch of them in a row 
all like that. All right, so there's a very easy way to create uh, the Phillips style uh, screw head for your bolts. And uh, like I say, if you go to the description, I'll provide you a link where you could download that alpha and just use it right away. And if you like this video, please leave me a like or a comment or something like that. And uh, I will create some other of these screws for you in Substance Designer. Because while there are a lot of Substance Designer tutorials out there, a lot of them are, are either pretty complicated or they're time lapses. Uh, and, and they don't show the simple stuff that we really need. <laughs> and that's kind of the theory behind my channel anyhow. And I hope that comes through. So that's what I'm going to do for you. All right. Take care.